Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add it on the Roku site is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Same thing for iTunes. For monthly subscriptions to sports betting picks, look us up here on YouTube. Dwyer Sports Betting is the channel. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know what? The world of boxing, like life itself, is changing rapidly. Right? It wasn't too long ago that if I were to ask the question, who owns the sport, the answer would probably be top rank and golden boy. Right? Promoters were king. No question about it. You had fighters relying on promoters to get them fights. Right? Fighters complaining about not being able to fight opponents from other promotional groups. Well, news has broken that Amir Khan's contract with Golden Boy is now over. Amir Khan, like Miguel Cotto, quite frankly, like Floyd Mayweather, is now a promotional free agent. Right? Understand, too, Mayweather's not the only big boxer in the sport who owns his own promotional group. Right? Vladimir Klitschko is one of the owners of K2. So what you have now is a situation where the power is shifting from the Don Kings and the Bob Arrows toward the Amir Khans and the Miguel Cotos. Right? Amir Khan now can seamlessly pick the best fight out there for him. If the other party is willing to dance with him, Khan can do what Michael Jordan did years ago when he wanted top dollar and didn't want to sign a long-term deal with the Chicago Bulls. He can say, this is for one night only. Right? In Jordan's case, it was one season only. Khan could say, this is for one night only. I'll fight this top rank fighter. Or I'll fight this Golden Boy fighter, or I'll fight this Mayweather Promotions fighter, or I'll fight this Main Events fighter for this one time. I think it's great news for the sport, right? I think what it's going to do is it's going to create more of a bidding process by promoters for these free agent fighters. <clears throat> it's also going to give Promoters who might be on the outside, who might not have experience in the game, or who might be viewed as smaller players in the game, an opportunity to put together event packages to try to get the attention of boxing free agents. So companies like Jay-Z's Rock Nation, right, which is breaking into the promotional game, 50 cents SMS promotions, as well as smaller promoters like Main Events, right? Gary Shaw. They now have a chance to come to the table and to say to an American, here's the deal we're offering for this one time event. And we believe this deal is better than what? top rank and golden boy are offering you for the same event right the way boxing used to be is that fighters would f sign these multi-fight deals with promoters in fact most of the fighters are still under these types of contracts right and so if you wanted to let's say get a fight with the Timothy Bradley you would necessarily have to deal with his promoter who would be a repeat player on Bradley's behalf. Understand, Bradley could want the fight. But if the promoter didn't want to give you access to Bradley, you wouldn't have access to Bradley. Keep in mind, too, there is a conflict of interest, and it's inherent 
when a promoter might promote more than one fighter in Bradley's weight class. In other words, that promoter might say, hey, I don't want Bradley fighting. Let's say a Miguel Cotto or a Floyd Mayweather. Right? Even though both would be blockbuster fights that would raise Bradley's profile. Right? The promoter might feel, quite frankly, that Bradley would generate more revenue for the promoter if he were to fight another fighter in the weight class in the promoter's stable. Now keep in mind, promoters pay for this privilege. Right? They're paying top dollar. They're advancing you money. They're giving you a signing bonus to sign with them for five fights. You know, whatever. The uh, time length, right? Different boxing jurisdictions have different rules on how long a contract can be. What promoters do is they give you candy up front. They say, sign with me. Right? They'll say, here's a bonus. If you take the bonus and you sign away years of your life, then later the promoter is going to say, hey, not so fast. We're not going to fight Floyd Mayweather next. I want you to fight my guy in this weight class. Why? Because then the promoter is guaranteed the winner of the fight. If that fight's a classic fight, the promoter might even have a lucrative rematch. If the rematch is good, the promoter might have a lucrative series of three fights. But understand it limits the fighter from fighting other big names in the division. It literally shifts some of the profits away from the fighter to the promoter in exchange for the security the fighter gets from the signing bonus and the idea of having access to the rest of the promoter stable right well what's gonna happen now is that a fighter like let's say a Miguel Cotto can literally say hey golden boy I like the deal that you're offering me to fight Saul Alvarez that's intriguing but before I sign the contract, let me find out what happens in these other fights. Before I sign the contract, let me talk with my family. Let news of the fact that I'm close to signing the fight Canelo leak out into the public so that other offers from other promoters can come forward and now I can play promoter A off against promoter B. If Promoter A is offering me X to fight Canelo, maybe somebody else is going to step up and offer me at least X to fight some fighter who might do more for my legacy than Saul Alvarez, right? Or, you know, somebody else is going to offer me even more money, right, in a fight that might help my career more down the road. Folks, I think it's even deeper than that. You look at these fighters now, they have their own promotional groups. So understand, they want more than one income stream. They want more than the purse. They want a share of the promotional money. Right? So right now, Miguel Cotto might be looking at the Golden Boy Canelo offer. And he might be thinking, wow, Golden Boy is making X dollars off this promotion. Why can't some of that money come my way? In fact, keep in mind too, you get residual value, don't you? Right? If it's Miguel Cotto Promotions promoting a fight, in fact, let's shift it up a little bit. If it's Mayweather Promotions promoting a fight, and other young guys see that Mayweather Promotions is involved in the promotion of a high-profile fight, then other young guys might actually go to Mayweather Promotions, right? It's free advertising for the promotional company. The promotional company is getting what's called the goodwill from putting on a successful event. And Miguel Cotto might say, hey, I know Golden Boy is an excellent promoter. But, 
If I could get Miguel Cotto promotions on the banner, right? If this event is a success, and why wouldn't it be? Right? Then I can set myself up for even more income as a promoter down the road. I can get the experience promoting a big event so that when I end my career as a boxer, I can start my career as a boxing promoter. Right? Keep in mind, too, this also shifts power away from the promoters toward the managers. Because now boxers are relying on their managers, or now we have a new term in boxing, advisors. Right? They're relying on their advisors to shift through different promotional offers from different promoters. You even have a situation where a boxing manager, Al Heyman, has a deal with NBC Sports. View the network like you would view a bank. Right? The network is offering money right, to boxing insiders to make fights happen on that network. So now you have a boxing manager getting money from a network. And so that boxing manager can turn to fighters in his stable and can say, hey, let me put you on this network. Let me offer you a purse from some of the money that I'm being offered by the network for the fight. Understand, this is a big shift, folks. If more boxers go the Amir Khan route, go the Kodo route, Go the Mayweather route. Boxing as we know it will be changed forever. Right? A few months ago, we all cared about the Richard Schaefer, Oscar De La Hoya feud that was threatening to blow Golden Boy apart. Well, what happens now? If the Golden Boy stable of fighters are increasingly becoming free agents, what happens if, when Golden Boy goes to arrange a fight for Amir Khan, it actually has to compete with main events, top rank, rock nation, SMS promotions? The dynamic's completely different, right? If a promoter has an exclusive contract and Amir Khan calls his promoter, right, and says, hey, I'd like to fight Floyd Mayweather, and the promoter says, hey, that's nice, Samir. Uh, we got some other guys here, uh, part of the Golden Boy brand. Uh, fight them. You're under contract to us. Isn't that a different dynamic than one where Amir Khan or his agent, his advisor, his boxing manager, contacts promoters and quietly says, hey, we're hoping to fight one of these guys on this very short list in our next fight. If you have a bid you want to make, make it to us. And then the promoter says, okay, well, gee, it's Amir Khan. We know his fight's net X. We know his last fight got this crowd. Let's make this bid. Right? That's a totally different dynamic. That's the new dynamic that's increasingly becoming part of boxing right? Let me also add this. Just from a financial standpoint, right? Amir Khan's numbers for his fight against Devin Alexander, and keep in mind, that was a great event, right? Both of those guys are world-class fighters. Both of those guys are toward the top of their weight classes, both of those guys are better known than most. But understand that that fight did not draw the audience on cable television. That the Timothy Bradley, Diego Chavez fight pulled. Just food for thought. Timothy Bradley outdrew Amir Khan. Right? That's important. Because when you're a free agent, you're subject to 
market data. You're not locked into long-term deals where you have guarantees on fights, right? As someone who signs a long-term deal with a promoter has, right? This is very different, right? Amir Khan now is calling out Mayweather. Unfortunately, he doesn't stand alone in terms of the actual market data on people who watched his fight on cable television. Right? So as a consequence of that, he lacks the economic leverage that he would have had had his recent fight against Devin Alexander, which wasn't pay-per-view here in the United States, right? Pulled, let's say, a 1.5 million. Right? If Amir Khan had pulled Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. numbers, he'd have a lot more leverage in demanding a fight against Mayweather than he has today. Mayweather issued a statement saying that his top priority is fighting Manny Pacquiao. That's his focus. Right? He's not focused right now on Amir Khan. Unfortunately, there isn't the outcry, and I say unfortunately because I believe Khan Mayweather would be a great fight, but unfortunately there isn't the outcry for a Khan Mayweather fight. Khan's numbers, which were decent but not great, give Mayweather cover to actually dodge Khan right here. And understand, if Mayweather dodges Khan for his May fight, Khan Mayweather is never happening if Mayweather holds true to his vow to end his career next September because Khan would be celebrating Ramadan and would be unavailable for a boxing match next September. Right? Understand, even if Khan decided to not celebrate Ramadan, right? In my opinion, it would be disrespectful to proceed with the fight against Khan next September, knowing that many people of his Muslim faith wouldn't be able to watch the match, right? Because they would be celebrating Ramadan, right? Keep in mind, boxing's a business. You want as many people watching your fight as possible, right? So there is a downside to not signing long-term with a promoter, right? The upside is freedom and more money if you continue to win high-profile fights, right? The downside is that you don't have a promoter who could possibly try to strong arm, you know, a Floyd Mayweather into having a match. Let me say this too, right? Um, you know, just understand that this is going to have profound repercussions. Because there's going to be a domino effect here. Understand, everyone knew that in order to fight Manny Pacquiao years ago, in fact, in order to fight Manny Pacquiao today, you had to deal with Bob Arum, right? And top rank. What happens if suddenly more elite fighters, right, with market power, Let's say Manny Pacquiao. Let's say Kel Brook. Let's say Keith Thurman. What happens if all of these guys suddenly become free agents? Understand, once a sizable group of elite boxers become free agents, then the current system completely crumbles because then the promoter would have no leverage whatsoever. You understand, if I can fight any of these guys without contacting a top rank or a golden boy or a main event, right, or a Gary Shaw, then you're dealing with a completely different world. So pay very close attention to the 147 pound division, right? Amir Khan is now a free agent. Floyd Mayweather is a free agent. Understand. If two more of the big names at 147 suddenly become free agents, promoters will have no leverage in that weight class at the championship level. Right? Understand, too, 
it totally impacts the market. If fighters under contract to promoters, let's say, you know, deals that have been long term but are now winding down, turn around and see the money that free agents get at the end of a competitive free market bidding process involving more than one promoter, right? then those fighters are going to start asking for more from their promoters right it's rapidly becoming a different world keep in mind too Floyd Mayweather did not become a free agent at least not to the best of my knowledge until he was in his 30s right Miguel Cotto later in his career as well right these guys were under contract for a long time then became free agents later in their careers after they were established and had won titles. Now you have Amir Khan in his 20s becoming a free agent. Right? Keep in mind he's leaving one of the biggest names in the sport, Golden Boy. Right? Keep an eye on the 20-year-olds who make the break. Right, because they're the future of the sport. If enough of them make the break so that there's a free agent pool of elite opposition to pick from, right, then free agents are going to have really far more power than they do even today. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com to sum up this video. Khan's a free agent, but I believe because of his numbers for his last fight against Devin Alexander, I don't believe Floyd Mayweather will have to fight him next, right? I believe Floyd dodges him in part because, number one, Amir Khan is a tougher opponent than Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion. I think Khan gives Mayweather nightmares. And number two, Mayweather can point to the soft numbers of Khan's last event, right? Knowing that if he gets by May, he never has to fight Amir Khan. Food for thought. And, of course, number three, in terms of legacy. I believe boxing fans know Khan's a tough opponent for Mayweather. But if you look in terms of historical significance... Khan doesn't have the resume of Manny Pacquiao, right? Mayweather at this point is fighting not just for, you know, the financial benefits of the sport. He's also fighting for legacy, right? Beating Khan doesn't give Mayweather the legacy lift that he would get by beating a Manny Pacquiao, right? Or, in my opinion, by fighting and beating the current middleweight champion, right? A division Mayweather hasn't yet conquered. So the risk-reward isn't there for a con fight right now, right? That's the fight I'd like to see. I don't think that's the fight that's going to happen. Khan's leverage would have been much higher had he pulled better numbers, right? His fight, and it was a good fight against Evan Alexander, was not the highest-rated fight of that night and that'll hurt him in negotiations. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and here on YouTube on my premium channel, Dwyer Sports Betting. Thanks for stopping by.